Palestine Action has targeted four sites connected to Israel over the weekend in their ongoing campaign against British companies and organizations thought to be complicit in Israel's war on Gaza. Two sculptures of Israel's first president, Chaim Wiseman, were, in the group's words, abducted from the University of Manchester. Wiseman was a central figure in securing the Balfour Declaration from the British government, a catalyst for the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Not to worry, though, the statues are quite safe and now clad in the mantles of Palestinian liberation. Activists and students also targeted the Institute for Manufacturing at Cambridge University. They say the Institute continues to work with British companies implicated in the genocide, including Rolls-Royce, Siemens and BAE Systems. Also targeted were the London offices of the Jewish National Fund, described by Haaretz, a, a newspaper, as a settler organization in every respect. It's accused of funding the dispossession of Palestinians from their territories. There was another action at the London offices of the Britain-Israel Communications and Research Centre, also known as BICOM. The Guardian described the lobbying group as, quote, one of the most persistent and slickest media operations in the battle for influence over opinion formers. Those actions fell on the 107th anniversary of the signing of the Balfour Declaration, and they led to an angry response from some. The Board of Deputies of British Jews released this statement. All thinking people should condemn the thuggery and vandalism in London, Manchester and Cambridge this Shabbat by the Palestine Action Group. The defacement of buildings housing British Jewish charities and university property is intended to harass and intimidate. The environment it creates serves to make many Jews, Jews feel targeted and unsafe in this country and ruins the public realm for the law-abiding public. This tragic war began when Hamas began a campaign of murder and hostage-taking, with hostages remaining in Gaza. For Palestine action to boast about abduction, as they did in one of their attacks, exposes the extremism of this group, which is intolerable in a free society. These actions must be punished with the full force of the law, and we will be working with government, police, and university authorities to ensure that a firm line is drawn between legitimate protest and violent extremism. Posting about the BICOM action, actress Tracy Ann Oberman made this comparison. So I always wondered what it would be like living in Nazi Germany. Today, I walked into my local high street and found this, with no police presence at all. A Jewish owner building smashed windows and daubed in red paint. I'm shaking with fear and rage. Old people flat next door also spattered. Where is this going to end? Those actions followed a remarkable and hard-won success by Palestine Action announced last week. After a long-running campaign by Palestine Action, Barclays Bank finally offloaded all shares in Israeli arms company Elbit Systems. Earlier today, I was joined by Max Geller, spokesperson for Palestine Action. I began by asking him about the group's actions this weekend. The most prominent one we took action against was the Jewish National Fund. The JNF, uh, when you target the JNF, you target the central logic of Zionism. That is the racist administration of the land of Palestine. Since its founding, the JNF has settled land for the benefit of Jews only. Uh, this underlines the apartheid practices of the entire state. And at this point, 13 months into the genocide, Palestine Action has decided that any uh, blatant symbols of Zionism uh, will be targeted. And what form did that, that those actions take? We uh, mostly uh, sprayed blood red paint all over the building facades. And yeah, you've had quite a lot of re reaction. Uh, the Board of Deputies of British Jews said that the actions were designed to harass and intimidate um, British Jews. Uh, Tracy Ann Oberman, the actress, uh, posted a picture of the Hillsdown House um, action and com seemed to compare it to living in Nazi Germany. What what do you make of those those reactions and those comments from 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 those people? Listen, we are living through the very end of the time where we have to take these people seriously. Soon, the dust will settle. The real death count of the Gaza genocide will come to light, and the monsters who have obfuscated what's been happening for the last year will be held to account. The idea that targeting a building is more important than what's happening in Gaza is just insane. And we're, uh, I, I don't have a lot to say in response 
uh, to discredited organizations like the Board of Deputies or to Ms. Oberman. Let's move on to a recent success, which is uh, the divestment uh, by Barclays from Elbit, uh, as, uh, an arms manufacturer that uh, Palestine Action has repeatedly targeted over the last year. Tell me how that came about and uh, how you feel about it. I mean, it's really great news. I think um, it's important for uh, your audience to understand just how um, serious Palestine Action has been taking its Barclays campaign. Uh, for the last over the last year, we have targeted this bank uh, over fifty times. Um, right now, as we speak, Palestine Action has members who are incarcerated in British prisons for the brave actions they have taken against this bank. It is a uh, it is a momentous win, but it's not one that uh, came easily or one that we take lightly. Uh, the most important thing to understand is that we will be targeting any company who helps facilitate uh, this genocide. And Elbit, uh, Israel's largest weapons exporter, uh, has been doing business uh, here in the UK um, uh, uninterrupted for far too long. Um, what's really, uh, what, what I'm most sort of uh, proud about is Palestine Action's ability to hit this bank repeatedly and also simultaneously at one one night over 20 different bank branches uh, were uh, targeted um, for about a month in Manchester one of the UK's largest cities we have uh, rendered uh, Barclays banks inoperable there's not a there was not a Barclays bank available to uh, Manchester residents for almost a month's time and I think that's uh, what led to this uh, this remarkable victory. So I should put it to you that Barclays denies that they've divested. They say that they don't hold any investments, but are rather acting as agents for other investors. What do you make of that claim? Um, I think, I mean, I appreciate the question, um, but from their own statement, it made, they made clear that uh, in one uh, SEC filing, they had uh, 3.4 million pounds worth of shares, and they no longer do. Um, this, uh, not only that, uh, following our direct action campaign, uh, the uh, Barclays officials uh, started um, publicly commenting on us. Um, this hasn't happened in the history of uh, Palestine targeting of uh, uh, banks uh, whatsoever. So I think once again, we can see that direct action gets the goods. Yeah, absolutely. And and also direct action, as you said earlier, comes with many costs. I think there are 16 of your activists currently imprisoned, uh, many more awaiting trial. What is life like for them? And um, yeah, what, what, what comment do you have on, on that? I mean, I really appreciate the question and I really appreciate the opportunity to come on your show and talk about these uh, political prisoners that we have. These are the most noble, brave, uh, lovely uh, people that um, some of whom I, I've actually met. Um, this is a, these people are incarcerated for trying to stop this genocide with their own hands. And um, I know for some of your audience, uh, Palestine Action's uh, tactics may seem drastic. But I have to insist to you that these 16 people are just as vivacious and um, important to their communities and uh, just as loved by their friends as uh, you and me and your, uh, uh, as you and me are by ours. And uh, their incarceration represents just as much as of, of a tragedy and an emergency as if you or I were arrested for standing up for what's right. Um, we, this, this war on Palestine has, it has started to come home uh, here in the UK. We have nurses missing their NHS shifts. We have teachers missing uh, their, uh, their, their classroom because instead of doing their jobs, they are locked up in jail cells uh, simply for trying to prevent uh, more Palestinian death. Um, it's it's extremely important that 
uh, we as a domestic movement to stop this genocide also start foregrounding our political prisoners because if we in the UK don't do it, uh, no one else will either. What can our audience do to support those, as you say, political prisoners or to support Palestine Action if they don't feel they can get directly involved? Uh, there are numerous ways. I mean, we're always raising money and um, you can log on to our website to donate. You can also write to our political prisoners and we're, um, we're also, uh, we, we've been uh, demonstrating outside of several of the jails where our, our prisoners are being held. Some of them are experiencing extremely repressive conditions. Um, I would encourage any of your uh, viewers who are uh, engaged in um, prisoner support in general uh, to, to get involved with the Palestine Action Prisoners. Uh, we have seen incredible solidarity between Palestine Action Prisoners and other uh, incarcerated UK uh, political prisoners like people from Just Stop Oil uh, and, and um, like the incredible folks at CAGE. So there are uh, people who are doing prison work are, are starting to see that our, our, our causes are, are linked.